welcome everyone to our lecture today. Uh, this lecture is hosted by Mind Body Garden Psychology Clinic, and uh, um, it's our pleasure pleasure to have Dr. Alan Chu with us today. Dr. Alan Chu is an assistant professor and the chair of the Sports Exercise and the Performance Psychology Master's Program at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. And he's also a certified mental performance consultant working with athletes and coaches across high school, college, and professional levels on uh, psychological skills training. In addition, he is a self-determination theory international scholar who conducts research on motivation, particularly in the sport and exercise domains. So today, Dr. Alan Chu will share with us um, his knowledge on this topic about motivation and our work productivity. Um, so, Dr. Chu, I will give all the time to you. Thank you, Dr. Chu, for the introduction. Uh, again, I'm Alan Chu. I'm, you can call me like a scientist practitioner. So as a university professor, I do quite a bit of research, uh, mainly on motivation, and I also consult with uh, athletes and performers, as Dr. Chu mentioned. So today's talk, I would like to talk about how motivation could be applied uh, in our current world of pandemic and how we could use that to potentially improve our work productivity and our health as well. Um, this could be a good self-assessment, you know, to see where you may be pretty strong already and where you may fall short a little bit. So this helps you diagnose any issue that you you may be feeling in your work environment with lower productivity. So thinking back for myself in March, I think my competence was a little lower in that moment uh, because I my I did, didn't feel like I had the ability to do really well when things got changed uh, from in-person to online for all my courses. I didn't feel as competent. I mean, I do now, but not at that time. Uh, and then I felt like it was harder for me to solve problems and I didn't feel like I was successful. So if you know that one of the area is a little lower, that's where you will want to target to improve your motivation. Um, again, all three needs are necessary for everybody across culture to really be good at what we do. Um, no matter it's at work, education, or um, in life in general. So when you uh, complete this, so it, it depends on whether you are an employee or you may be even be an employer or manager. There are ways that you could help yourself improve productivity, but you can also improve your subordinates or your employees if you are already a manager or an owner. So this could be a way for you to assess your subordinate as well. So here are some concrete strategies um, about how do we promote our autonomy, competence, and relatedness. So this is just one of the model uh, based on the research evidence and also my personal experience that will help with work engagement and productivity. Um, this includes social support, which will increase relatedness we are, when we are connect with people, we are more likely to be more dedicated to do our job. You know, if you like your boss, your boss like you, you know, you're gonna be able to work more productively. Influence in decision-making, uh, having more autonomy in the way that you do things. And then job demand will be negative, uh, meaning that if you have less demand, from others, you, you are more likely to feel competent yourself. So I know, I know not all the times we can control the environment. Uh, if you are a manager, I encourage you to really create those opportunities and environment for social support and decision making. But if you are an employee, uh, there are still things that you can do to facilitate that process, to talk to your manager, your boss, or try to implement in your own work environment. So this includes uh, setting some new routine, new goals and priorities 
uh, particularly in the morning. Uh, this sounds easier said than done. Um, you know, I know everybody has some goals and priorities, but what I want you to do is to really get a habit of every day, either the first thing in the morning or maybe the night before your work to really list what is your first thing that you want to do, second thing that you want to do during that day, if you do have a little bit of a choice. So for example, for me, I know the first thing I don't want to do is to engage in my email and social media. Because I know once I read the news, once I try to respond to other people's email, my mind already goes there. And I wouldn't be able to focus on uh, so-called the work that I should prioritize. For me, that would mean preparation for teaching uh, and also a lot of writing, which require tremendous amount of focus. Uh, and this probably relates to Dr. Xu's expertise in uh, sleep and biological rhythm, you know, in a way that in the morning is when we have the highest productivity, the majority of us. So put the work in places that you, you would need the most thinking, critical thinking, and most planning. Um, so this routine should also include psychological routine. So not only physical, uh, for example, would you be able to incorporate maybe some deep breathing every day, you know, just take a deep breath in the morning to try to center yourself right here, right now, to be able to focus on the task at hand and try to not think about the past or think about the future too much. So that will improve our uh, autonomy, you know, having some control over what we do. Uh, one thing that I do personally, you know, of course I have like a to-do list on my calendar, but I also have a form. Uh, it's called a habit, habit tracker. It's just a way for me to list all the things I want to do it that day and check it off uh, when I complete those. So that gives me autonomy, but also competence when I accomplish those tasks. Just a way for you to assess whether you're doing what you want to do. Uh, one way to improve your competence more is to try to engage in tasks that you're good at and delegate the tasks that you are not. Uh, again, I know not everybody had that choice. If you are, you are an employee, um, but I think you can still have some little bit of control over the specific ways that you do your tasks and try to find things that you're good at and communicate with your manager and your boss. Uh, so for me, uh, I know I'm not very good at double checking everything. So when I um, write a piece of article or when I do some writing, you know, there will be some students that I usually ask to help to delegate those tasks to them. Um, but I'm, in, I'm very interested and very competent in some of the strategic planning, uh, meeting with people and talking to people. So I try to engage in those tasks more as a sports psychology consultant. So I like one, one thing that manager did not do well in the past is to assign tasks based on what the manager want rather than what the employees want or what the employees need. I think we need to flip our thinking if you are a manager. Research has shown that if we use people's strength and try to assign tasks based on what they are good at, you know, they are more motivated, more engaged, they have higher productivity. So if you are a manager, hope you take some time to think about that. But if you are an employee, see whether you can communicate with your manager or show what you are good at and even initiate the tasks that you think you will do well. Um, last but not least is trying to find ways to connect with your colleagues in meaningful ways. So I know a lot of us are on Zoom calls, webinars, uh, maybe different type of video tools to communicate with our colleagues. 
but I think we should try to think about additional way uh, beyond just meeting uh, about work. We should try to find ways to connect and meet over coffee, happy hour, or maybe have some board games activity to try to connect with others that way. Um, as I mentioned, if you have a good relationship with your manager and your friends and colleagues, you're more likely to be more motivated. Um, it's probably easier if you're a manager or you are um, a leader on your team, maybe organizing those Zoom calls that you don't talk about work at all, or maybe even organize some exercise session. Uh, one of my previous colleagues in Texas uh, she organized like a Friday exercise class that you know uh, that she asked her friends and colleagues to join. That's a great way to build relationship there. And we know that the, the more we feel connected uh, beyond work, the more likely we have good cohesion and relationship to do our job. And then one general strategy that may be helpful um, is mindfulness so mindfulness in chinese is uh you know this is mindfulness and this represents the meaning really well meaning our heart is it is on focusing on today or right here right now so one one way to really help with that is to when you when you feel stressed or you're feeling not productive to take a deep breath and shift your mindset on focusing on today uh, we know that if we focus too much on the future so we if we worry about the future worry about the election worry about the pandemic you know we we get anxious and we we can't focus on what we do right now um, so taking a deep breath uh, even better would be training or meditation yoga, mindfulness exercise to help with that. Um, also, this help with not thinking about the past. You know, maybe if unfortunately some of you who had friends and family who got sick because of COVID, or you happen to be unemployed, you had some financial stress from the past, you know, those are things that make us feel sad and depressed. So I think every day, we remind ourselves this is a new day, focusing on right here, right now, uh, will help us with the productivity and well-being in general. So these three strategies that I listed here are the one that particular about work and mindfulness is just a way of living uh, to help you be in the moment uh, and right here, right now. Um, I mean, even thinking back at some of my work with my clients, you know, when they worry about their performance or they worry about the championship, you know, it's because they are not focusing on right here, right now, and they may not be able to perform well at practice or competition when their mind shifts in the future or too much in the past. So just try to keep that awareness um, in your mind. And research has shown that when we are more aware and more mindful of our thoughts and emotion, the more likely we feel autonomy. Because when we are aware of the good things that we have, we are aware of the choices that we have, we feel like we have more control over our life. Uh, I mean, yes, I cannot control my, like the, the work environment and the pandemic, but then I can control still quite a few things in my job, you know, in the way that I connect with people. Uh, one more thing uh, would be gratitude. Um, so you can do it informally or formally. Me personally, I keep a gratitude journal. So every Sunday, I will list five things that I'm thankful for each week. Um, that can include anything that I feel like I, I did a good job, or that could include any people who have helped me. Um, so that's also a way to help you feel more connected with people, but feel like you have more choice over your life and feel more competent. Just to remind yourself, there are still many good things 
happening in your life. So that's a gratitude uh, exercise. Again, uh, from science and from research, you know, that help us with well-being and engagement. Competence in general, I, I, I think we, we need to have more self-compassion during these times. It's really hard for us to demand ourselves to have the same productivity as before the pandemic. I think we want to improve our motivation. We want to improve productivity, but we we don't want to compare ourselves down to what we were in the past. And then we need to recognize that we do have limit, you know, over what we do. Uh, and the more we are accepting of ourselves, the more we are mindful, the more we are compassionate toward ourselves, the more likely we actually feel more competent and be more motivated because we are using those positive self-talk to encourage ourselves. You know, sometimes people think about positive self-talk is something wishy-washy. It's not, you know, when you talk to yourself, you know, it's, you become, you, you become what you talk to yourself. You know, if you talk to yourself negatively, you know, you'll be, you'll be more negative um, in general. If you talk to yourself more positively and you feel like you could be, um, you could be more motivated, potentially uh, be more compassionate toward yourself, the more likely you're able to do that. So I think the self-talk is something that we have to pay attention to a lot uh, during this time. Yes, I think uh, I really like that point to readjust our own expectation. Uh, actually, many of my clients this this year did notice themselves and their colleagues, their productivity level actually dropped uh, to a lower, a little bit lower, like two third compared to last year. And mm -hmm. if they, you know, they don't adjust this expectation, just keep on pushing themselves, trying to be as productive as last year when they work from the office, when they don't have all these family distractions going on, it possibly real, really, really hard. Um, well, I don't see any questions from audience yet, but one last question from me is, I know you work in university settings. I know some of our audience are still in um, school right now too. So uh, I feel like a lot of this, this series, like strategies you talk about can be very helpful to students also. Uh, school gonna start soon. I know some students gonna go back to school, some uh, like for college, some students possibly gonna work from home. And uh, um, is there any specific suggestions for students who have to think about returning to school from you? Yeah, those are, that's a really great question. I think yeah, that's the struggle that students have is that they, they don't really know how exactly the professor is going to do their classes. You know, for most of the professors, it's the first time they do it the way that they do it. You know, maybe, I mean, some of us have experiences teaching online. I, I did, but then I'm teaching a different group of students because those students want in person and they choose an online course. And that is not their, not necessarily their choice. So I think for students is, you know, to, I think, kind of going back to self-compassion, but if for some concrete strategy, what I would, what I would say is that maybe, I'm not asking any student to lower the expectation, but maybe expect that there will be some new challenges with the new way of teaching and learning. Um, so if you normally take six courses, maybe this is a time to think about, well, whether I may take uh, five courses in, instead of six so that I may have a little bit more autonomy and competence, you know, in the work that I do. You know, we know that when we are stressed and we are bombarded with different tasks, it's really hard for us to feel competent. You know, if, like, just going back to the example, when I had to change my classes from in-person to online, you know, I definitely did not feel competent because not only it was challenging, but also the time pressure. You know, that's just not enough time for me to modify everything to the best way that I could. So I would ask students to think about, well, um, is it really practical to take the same amount of courses as before. 
Uh, and then I think there are many different strategies would depend on how your professors do your classes. Um, but I think most professors are going to be a little bit more flexible. So if there are things that you can think of that could help you personally, maybe make a suggestion to, to the professor. Maybe can be regarding some deadline, you know, maybe suggesting instead of having deadline on this day, you know, communicate with your professors earlier. Uh, I have maybe mentioning I have several different tests on this week, you know, can I potentially have a deadline later? I think frequent communication is what I, what I would suggest students to do, you know, reach out to their professors often, reach out to their advisor, reach out to their classmate, you know, to see how to navigate those challenges. It's, it's very different because if you're taking online courses quite a bit, you know, it could, you could potentially have a lot of exam on the same day that you normally would not in person because the university schedule classes in a way that exams are on different day. If you take classes on Monday, Wednesday versus Tuesday, Thursday, assignments tend to be on different days. Um, and it's just more, um, more things that are unpredictable. But again, going back to here, control the controllable, thinking, you know, what are the things that you can control? You know, your own schedule is something that you can still have some control. Uh, communication with your professor is something that you can control. Um, so hopefully that could, that could help some students. And I, I have a little bit of advice on one piece of an article that I could also share afterward, you know, on some of the specific strategy, uh, not only me, but also some other professors share as well. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much, Dr. Chu. Um, so that's all my questions. I haven't seen any questions coming in from the audience. Yeah, so it's almost the time. Is there any final words you want to let everyone know? then that can be the end of today's lecture. Yeah, I think just the same message that the CDC is putting, you know, wear your mask, <laughs> stay safe. I know it's, it's, it's really challenging because we want to fulfill our autonomy competence relatedness. You know, that means we want to travel, we want to do things that we normally like to do, but uh, this time we have to prioritize health a little bit more on rather than over or over our personal autonomy some, so sometimes. And we, we may just express the autonomy, fulfill our autonomy in a different way. And knowing that um, the more discipline that we have now, the more autonomy we will have in the future. So kind of like looking at autonomy, not just at right now, but also in the future as well. Mm, I really like that. Thank you very much. Great I question. Think I, I really enjoy sharing some of my knowledge and the topic that I'm, you know, one of my topic, one of the topic that I'm most passionate about. Yes, definitely. Uh, we rarely hear like very systematic, evidence-based, research-based way of talking about this. And I think after you lay out the research, the foundation and then a lot of strategies make sense. And more, much more is for audience to take this information and start thinking their own life based on their own need, their own schedule, what's happening in their own life, how they can apply this theory into their own life, what kind of strategies they can come up for themselves. I think that's very valuable. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. And there are many news these days talking about self-determination theory and how that could be applicable to different settings at work, um, at you know, relationship, uh, the whole pan pandemic situation. Almost every week, I see some news on that topic. So if you are interested, you know, maybe every weekend you can cut Google and find something new over there. It's it's really applicable in in our life right now. Just because we really missing some of the psychological needs in the moment. Yeah, definitely great. So if you have any resources, uh, please feel free to send me. I will post the links uh, under the video in our Facebook page uh, at Man Faraday Garden Psychology and later we may put some of the clips on YouTube and I will attach those resources you send me to there also. 
Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I definitely do that. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you for your time coming to our clinic to share with everyone about your knowledge. Yep, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, audience also say thank you. I got some message. Yeah, okay, thank you. Bye. All right.